A couple weeks ago, GSAP showcased this website as their site of the day on Twitter. Naturally, I took a look and it absolutely lived up to the recognition. The landing page featured an impressive scroll animation where the logo transitions into 3D cubes as you scroll, eventually forming a clean layout to reveal the content. It looked challenging to recreate and it was. Last weekend, I decided to take on the challenge of building a similar animation using GSAP and scroll trigger. After some experimentation, I managed to achieve results close to the original website. It took quite a bit of time, but in today's video, I'll show you how you can create such experience for your own landing page. We'll be using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, GSAP and scroll trigger. Rebuilding these experiences from scratch and creating videos, especially twice a week, takes a significant amount of time and effort. So I'd genuinely appreciate it if you could drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It really helps the channel grow and allows me to keep sharing content like this. Also, if you'd like to access the source code, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's jump into the code. We'll need two sections for this layout the sticky section and the about section. Inside the sticky section, we'll include four elements, the logo, a container for the 3D cubes, the first header, and an additional header that will be revealed as we scroll. For the logo, we'll divide it into three columns. Each column will contain two divs with the class name block, which will make it easier to style the logo later using CSS. Each block will also have a unique class for better customization. Next, we'll move on to the cubes wrapper where we'll create individual cubes. Each cube will have six faces, front, back, right, left, top and bottom. We'll duplicate this cube five more times, creating one cube for each block. Each cube will also have a unique class identified by a number to help distinguish them. The first header, header one, will include an h1 element with some placeholder text. The second header, header 2, will have an h2 and a paragraph element with some additional dummy text. Finally, the about section will also include some simple placeholder text to ensure the page doesn't look empty. And that's it for the HTML structure. Let's move on to styling. We'll start by resetting margins and padding to 0 and set box sizing to border box for consistent element sizing across the layout. For the HTML and body, we'll set their width to 100% of the viewport and height to 600 viewport height. This extended height gives us enough scrolling room to pin the section and apply animations later. We'll also apply a custom font. Images are styled to fit their containers perfectly using object fit set to cover. Each section is positioned relative with the full width and height of the viewport. Overflow is hidden to keep animations contained within the visible area. The sticky section has a dark background with light color text for contrast, while the about section uses light background with darker text. We'll use flexbox for the about section to align the content neatly in the center. For the logo, it's positioned at the center of the sticky section using absolute positioning and a transform to ensure it stays aligned. Columns are spaced out evenly and the blocks within them are styled with a base size. We'll apply rotations on the first and fifth block to create the layout same as the original website's logo. The 3D cubes container is styled to preserve the 3D effect and a large perspective is added to create depth. Each cube is positioned absolutely to allow precise placement within the container. 
The width and height of each cube are set to 150 pixels to create a uniform shape. We'll again set transform style to preserve 3D. This ensures that the cube maintains its depth in a 3D space. Next, we'll style the six faces of the cube. Each face is positioned absolutely within the cube with the same width and height of 150 pixels. Next, I'll paste some basic CSS to position each face. This setup ensures that all six faces are perfectly aligned to form a 3D cube. Next, I've added some more CSS to position each cube over its corresponding block. I manually found the perfect positions using the inspect window to ensure everything aligns just right. These positions represent the initial placement of each cube when the page loads. For each cube, I've adjusted the top and left values to determine its position within the viewport. Then I used Translate 3D to set their initial Z position for a far distance, making them appear small and far away. I've also added rotations along the X, Y and Z axis for each cube to create a slightly random orientation. These rotations set the stage for dynamic animations as we scroll. Later, we'll animate the Z position to create a zoom in effect and rotate the cubes on scroll, bringing the entire 3D animation to life. Next, we'll style the headers. The first header is positioned centrally with a width of 60% and uses transforms to perfectly align it in the center. It has a bold clean design with light color text that stands out against the dark background. The second header is smaller with a width of 30%. It starts scaled down, blurred and fully transparent, making it invisible on the page load. This setup prepares it for a smooth reveal animation during scrolling. Finally, I'll include some CSS directly from the Lanis documentation. This will set up the styles needed for smooth scrolling, which we'll add later in JavaScript. Now that the CSS is complete, let's move on to scripting. Before diving into JavaScript, let's take a look at the file I created called cubesdata.js. This file contains a centralized data structure for managing the animation properties of all six cubes. The object cubes data organizes the data for each cube. For every cube, there are two key states. Initial state defines the starting properties when the page loads, including the top and left positions for placement, rotations along the X, Y and Z axis, and the Z position for depth. The final state specifies the target properties that each cube will animate to as we scroll. This approach allows us to keep the animation logic clean and modular. Instead of hard coding values directly in the script, we can dynamically reference this data for positioning, rotations, and transformations. It also makes future adjustments or adding new cubes much simpler. Now let's move on and implement this data in our JavaScript. We start by importing the cubes data from the file we just created. This will provide the animation properties for all cubes. Next, we set up an event listener for when the DOM content is fully loaded. Inside this, we initialize Lenis, a smooth scrolling library. Lenis is configured to trigger scroll trigger updates as we scroll, ensuring our animations sync smoothly with the scroll progress. You can find this block of code on their documentation website. After setting up Lenis, we grab references to key elements on the page, the sticky section, the logo, the cubes container, and the two headers. These will be manipulated during the scroll animations. We calculate the height of sticky section dynamically, setting it to four times the height of the viewport. This ensures there is enough scrolling space for our animations to fully play out. Next, we target all the cube faces inside the cubes container. Using a loop, we dynamically assign images to each face. For every cube face, we create an image element, set its source to a file from the assets folder, and update the alt text. This loop ensures that all cube faces are filled with images. 
This part sets up the foundation for smooth scrolling and prepares our elements for animations. Now let's move on to creating scroll trigger instance and building the animations. But first, we define a utility function called interpolate. This function helps calculate values between a starting and ending point based on the progress of the animation. It's a simple yet powerful tool that ensures more transitions for positions, rotations and other properties. With that in place, we can set up a scroll trigger instance now. This is the core of our scroll based animations. The trigger is set to this sticky section, meaning the animations will be tied to this specific section. The start and end property is defined when the scroll trigger becomes active. It starts when the top of the sticky section aligns with the top of the viewport and continues for distance equal to the calculated sticky height which we set earlier. We enable scrub with a value of 1, ensuring the animations are synced with the scroll position. The section is also pinned during the animation, meaning it stays fixed in place while the scroll animation plays out. This configuration lays the groundwork for triggering animations based on scroll progress. Now let's move ahead and build the actual animations inside the scroll trigger. We'll use on update callback to handle animations dynamically as the user scrolls. The scroll progress determines how far along the animation is at any given point and we use this value to smoothly transition styles and properties. To start, we animate the logo's blur effect. This begins right away and completes within the first 5% of the scroll range. The blur starts at 0 and gradually increases to a maximum of 20 pixels creating a soft fade out effect. The opacity of the logo starts decreasing after 2% of the scroll range and continues until it becomes fully transparent. This ensures a smooth transition as the cubes comes into focus. For the cubes container, the fade-in begins at 1% of the scroll range with its opacity increasing steadily until it's fully visible. This gives the illusion of cubes emerging as the logo disappears. Moving to header 1, its animation is spread across the first 40% of the scroll range. During this phase, the header scales up from its original size to 1.5 times larger while also becoming more blurred. Simultaneously, the opacity decreases making it disappear as though the header is fading away as it grows and blurs. The second header begins its animation after 40% of the scroll range. It scales up from 75% to its full size while the blur effect reduces from intense to completely sharp. Its opacity increases from fully transparent to fully visible during this phase, creating a smooth ripple effect. These calculations allow us to control exactly when and how each animation occurs, tying them to specific portions of scroll range. This ensures all the transitions feel seamless and well-timed. Now that we have animated the logo, headers and cubes container, let's move on to animating the cubes themselves. The first phase of the animation happens during the initial 50% of the scroll range. The second phase begins after the first 50% of scroll range is complete. The cubes transition smoothly from their initial positions, rotations and Z depths to their final states. To handle these animations, we loop through the cubes data object which contains all the initial and final properties for the cubes. For each cube, we retrieve its data and calculate the current values based on the progress of the first phase. The interpolate function plays a key role here, allowing us to calculate smooth transitions between the starting and ending values of properties like top, left, rotations on the x, y and z axis as well as the z depth 
which controls how far the cube is from the viewer. During the second phase, we add unique behavior for cube 2 and cube 4. For the second cube, we gradually increase its rotation on the y-axis by 180 degrees. While for fourth cube, we rotate it in the opposite direction by minus 180 degrees. These additional rotations are calculated using the same interpolation technique, ensuring that they blend seamlessly with the overall animation. Finally, we apply the calculated values to each cube style properties. The top and left values are set as percentages to precisely position the cubes within the container. The transform property is updated with the current 3D translations, rotations and depth, making the cubes move and rotate dynamically as the user scrolls. By splitting the animation into two phases and dynamically interpolating the properties, we ensure smooth and synchronized transitions for all the cubes. This gives the sequence depth and fluidity, making the entire animation feel polished and engaging. And that's it. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.